Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna Zatmi and today we're studying the supracolic and infracolic compartments of your abdominal cavity. Now I'm, I'm sure you're quite confused what they are but today I'm going to make it easy for you and inshallah I'll teach you with my level best effort to get this concept into your mind. Before we get started here is the motivation for today. Keep trying, do not ever give up in your life. You learn from your mistakes and no hard work goes to waste. So keep trying until you succeed. To everybody that's new to my channel, welcome. From today onwards, the concepts of anatomy will become a piece of cake. So do not forget to subscribe and turn your post notifications on. The supracolic and infracolic compartments of the abdomen are formed by the transverse colon and the transverse mesocolon. We've already discussed what the mesocolon is, right? So that is with the help of greater omentum that lies in front of your small intestine. I've removed the small intestine in this case. Uh, is basically going to divide your entire abdominal cavity into a, a compartment that lies above the transverse colon and mesocolon. This is the supracolic compartment and below the transverse colon mesocolon known as the infracolic compartment. The basic aim of these compartments is for the surgeons because any abscess or infection that occurs in the supracolic compartment, the surgeons know where to go with space to operate on and similarly on the infracolic compartment, right? So what happens is in the supracolic compartments, due to the peritoneal reflections on the liver, there is division of your supracolic compartments into various spaces. These are the subphrenic and the subhepatic spaces, all right? And these are the intraperitoneal spaces. Apart from that, there are the extraperitoneal spaces that we're going to discuss today. On the other hand, we have the infracolic compartment. And the infracolic compartment is divided into right and left parts by the mesentery that we just studied, along with the paracolic gutters. All right, let's go ahead and begin with the supracolic compartment spaces first. So the first space we have are the subphrenic spaces. These are the right and the left subsphrenic spaces. And as their name says it, they lie below the diaphragm. They're also known as the right and the left anterior spaces because they lie anterior to the liver and in the anterior side of your abdomen. As I mentioned earlier, it's due to the reflections of the peritoneum around the liver. So the falciform ligament is divided into the left and the right parts. The part on the left lying anterior to the liver between the diaphragm and the left lobe of the liver this space is known as the left anterior or left subphrenic space. The importance of the space is that infection can come into the space following surgeries of what do you think? What do you think is lying over here that can communicate and spread the abscess or pus into the space? Well, it is the spleen. This is the spleen right here. Any operation of the spleen or of the tail of the pancreas you can see this is the tail of the pancreas or obviously i've drawn this a little low but infection following operation of your splenic flexure here of the colon and operations following obviously your stomach any operation or manipulation of these places and resulting in an infection will spread to the left anterior space and that is the significance of the space Next space we have is between the right lobe of the liver and the diaphragm. Lying anterior to the liver, this is known as the right subsphrenic or right anterior space. What is the clinical significance of this space? That infections that come from the gallbladder, because obviously it's lying on the right, you can see right here, or the infections that are coming all the way down from the appendix coming to the right side, these can enter your right anterior right subphrenic space. I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the next spaces. These are the subhepatic spaces or the posterior spaces lying below the liver. So the first space is the left subhepatic space or left posterior space right here. This left posterior space is another name for the lesser sac and any infection of the lesser sac is going to be the infection of your left subhepatic space. For instance, the posterior perforation of a peptic ulcer or stomach ulcer can result in infection or pus in this space, all right? And then we have a very important space. This is known as the hepatorenal pouch of Morrison, all right? Now, this is also known as the right posterior space or right subhepatic space. Hepatorenal pouch of Morrison is super important because let's first talk about its boundaries. So this is the diaphragm you can see. Let's hide this right here. This is the liver. 
The Morrison's pouch is bounded anteriorly. Obviously, you can see here it's anteriorly bounded by the liver and then by the gallbladder. Posteriorly, it is bounded, you can see, by the right, right suprarenal gland, upper pole of the right kidney, some part of the transverse mesocolon and the duodenum. You can see the duodenum. You can see the duodenum right here. That's the posterior boundary and superiorly by the coronary ligament of the liver, whereas inferiorly it communicates with your rest of the peritoneal cavity. Now, that is an important point right there. And to the left, it has a communication with the omental bursa, the epiploic foramen. This is the right free margin of the lesser omentum right here. So it can communicate with that as well. It carries great clinical significance. This Morrison's pouch is the most dependent part of the abdominal cavity when the person is in a supine position. All right. I'm talking about the abdominal cavity. All right. So the, it is the most common site for subphrenic abscesses to accumulate their fluid over here. Especially when there is an infection in the gallbladder, that too will come here. If there is any infection of the uh, vermiform appendix, this too will come here because the paracolic gutter of the right side communicates with this. If there is any issue in the lesser sac, it can also enter over here, that infection, right? This can get involved in most of the infections of the right side because of its communications with the various spaces. The next spaces we have are the extraperitoneal spaces. These are the right and left extraperitoneal space and the midline extraperitoneal space. The right extraperitoneal space is lying on top of the kidney, right over here. It basically lies around the right suprarenal gland because the kidney is an extraperitoneal organ. Whereas the left extraperitoneal space, this space lies around the left kidney, upper pole of the left kidney and the left suprarenal gland. And finally, the midline extraperitoneal space is on the bare area of the liver where there is no peritoneum. This area, since it's in very close proximity to the liver with no covering of the peritoneum involved, therefore, the infection of the liver can spread to this space causing a liver abscess. So these were the supracolic spaces of your abdomen. Let's talk about the infracolic compartment. This is simpler than the supracolic compartment. Basically what happens is mesentery proper uh, within the large intestine is dividing infracolic compartment into a right and a left part. All right. These are known as the right and the left infracolic compartments. So the right infracolic compartment and the left infracolic compartment. Right lies between the ascending colon and the mesentery, whereas left uh, basically lies between the descending colon and the mesentery. Apart from that, lateral to both the colons, there are very important areas. These are also kind of like spaces. This is known as the right paracolic gutter, whereas this is known as the left paracolic gutter. The importance of these gutters is that they also play a role in spread of infection. So in case of appendix being infected, it goes into the right paracolic gutter. And Infections that are coming from the lesser sac or from the gallbladder can also reach to this right paracolic gutter due to the connection with the Morrison's pouch. So you can see this communication is basically being built over here. And that is the clinical significance of all of these spaces. Similarly, on the left paracolic gutter, mostly due to the phrenicocolic ligament, it's kind of locked from the upper part. But from below, from it can actually, uh, the infection can spread to the pelvic ca cavity or in pelvic cavity infections can go to the left paracolic gutter. And finally, we have the recto-uterine pouch. You remember that we talked about how the peritoneum is uh, traced on a sagittal section. We talked about this being the uterus, the bladder. Between the uterus and the rectum lies your recto-uterine pouch. All right. This recto-uterine pouch is uh, very important because it is the pouch, also known as the pouch of Douglas. This is basically the pelvic cavity. All right. We've done, abdomen spaces are done. Now we're talking about the pelvic cavity. The pouch of Douglas is do not forget this guys it is the most dependent part of your abdomen and pelvis when a person is in upright position whereas if the person is supine position it is the most dependent part of the pelvic cavity only i hope that makes sense to you so when the person is upright most if there's any fluid above it will accumulate here but when the person is lying supine the abdominal cavity also becomes a little dependent. Which area more specifically? The Morrison's pouch. So 
in a supine position the morrison's pouch is the most dependent part of the abdominal cavity pouch of douglas is the most dependent part in the pelvic cavity so there are two dependent parts when you're supine and one dependent part when you're standing upright what are the boundaries of the pouch of douglas this is anteriorly is obviously the uterus posterior fornix of the vagina posteriorly is the rectum inferiorly this fold of peritoneum is known as the rectovaginal fold obviously this is for the females in case of males this uh, uterus is obviously not there so or everything i've said about the recto uterine pouch with holds similar importance in males it will be known as the recto vesical pouch so that was all you needed to know i really hope you understood the lecture do not forget to subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching